Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. So this episode is going to finish off our nutrition month. And I was debating about who I should talk to. I wanted to do an interview and um, I kept going like round and round, like who should I, who should I bring on um, to pick their brain about nutrition? And I decided to talk to my mom, but there's a few reasons why. Number one, she was the first person, you know, to feed me. <laughs> you, you nourished me as a child, mother, and young adult. Um, my mom has also been very adventurous with food and nutrition. That's one of the things I remember as a child is sort of going to like Indian restaurants or, you know, Mexican restaurants when that was, you know, that was the seventies, that was the seventies. It wasn't like as easy to go to weird restaurants as it is now, you know, weird. I mean, I say that because at the time it felt weird. Um, also my mom has um, struggled with her own issues around nutrition, especially um, cutting out certain foods. And she's been very um, creative at finding alternatives. And the biggest one, I have to be a full disclosure, my mom is my personal chef. Was never quite intended to be this way, right, mom? Like, right. That, <laughs> it was never intended to be this way, but... Um, 14 years ago, my mom's husband, my stepdad, um, they were in a tragic accident and he lost his life. And um, we decided the Christmas after sort of randomly that maybe we should live together. And so um, we live, we moved, my husband and I moved, I bought a new house with my mom. My mom has a in-law suite here in my home and she, we've been living together now 13 years mom. Oh, look, living together is now a teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and because my mom loves to cook and I, when we first moved in together, I was working night shift. The kids were really little. Um, she started to cook meals when I was not home um, and sort of help in that way. Cause that's something that she's always enjoyed doing. And then, um, I had a couple back injuries and had surgery and just sort of it morphed into like Grammy now cooks for us. And I've lost a lot of my, my cooking skills. I mean, I know I could pick them up, but like it's after maybe a decade, <laughs> I'm really, really rusty. So I felt like, um, you were the perfect person to have this conversation with mom. What do you think? I'm honored that you feel that way. <laughs> so, and I have to say too, that, you know, my mom, I really feel like you were crunchy before crunchy was cool. You were like, I, I don't even know what crunchy means, but what can I say? I was a hippie way back in the sixties and always tended toward natural, if at all possible. And you know, trying to keep things healthy and make sure you got the nutrition you needed as a child. So that was always paramount as far as my parenting was concerned. That was one of my major focuses. Yeah. And I, I mean, those are some of my earliest memories, sort of us having healthy options in the house, you know, you um, really instilling those, those things and doing a lot of research. I mean, I remember you sort of, sort of learning about nutrition and learning even about supplements. Like I remember, I remember conversations around like you learning about the absorbability of vitamin C and what other vitamins, you know, and this was when I was young, like elementary age, you also breastfed Risa and I, my sister and I like before breastfeeding was really you know, it was, it was sort of, you were an outlier, I guess I would say. Um, and a you, rebel. Made, you were a rebel. Yeah. I wonder where <laughs> I get that from. You should not have given me such a hard time as a teenager, mom. <laughs> I didn't want you to grow up like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, you made my own baby food. Like I, mm -hmm. I remember when I was pregnant with my kids sort of thinking like I wanted to model that 
that early childhood stuff around what you did for me. Like, I, I remember being like, well, my mom did it. Like, I'm going to breastfeed. I'm going to, you know, make their baby food. I'm going to be really mindful about it. So you definitely instilled like a lot of those early lessons for me. So thank you. Yay, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I brought you on today really because um, number one, I don't want to be disingenuous because like I don't super cook around here a lot. You you do do a lot of that. I mean, I do breakfast and lunch, you know, but you're the you're the dinner lady, um, which can be kind of the harder thing, you know, as a mom. And I have to say too, like my mom literally cooked like every meal for us growing up, and you were a full time working parent, so like. <sighs> When I say that, like you cook for me, I and I work from home. I I, I feel a little spoiled, but we're not going to change that. It's working, so we're not. I like it. It's fun. I love to cook. So, yeah, it's like using all of our strengths. I think you know, mm-hmm. and this is yours. So, but I wanted to bring you on because I've been talking about um, elimination diets. I know you know my mom's my biggest fan, so she is up to date on all my podcasts. So talking about the elimination diet that we did with Jeffrey, elimination diet for myself, nutrition for weight loss. And, you know, you were, you were, you knew all of those things. I mean, when I did the elimination diet with Jeffrey and with myself, I was, oh no, when I did it for myself, we did it together. Mm -hmm. We did it together. So that was really helpful. But Jeffrey's was all me. I mean, I had to cook and and do all that stuff. Yeah. Um, But remember, I made beetroot spaghetti sauce, too, (laughs) just so I would know what it tastes like. And I actually like it, even though none of the you did. So (laughs) the flavor, too. I think it was the color that the hot pink that was a little hard to eat (laughs) hot pink pasta um so yeah so you know you've been involved and you were curious I think you were somebody that you know when I was venturing into this with with Jeffrey and as a young mom you know you were somebody that I could talk to about and you would understand it wasn't like why are Mm -hmm. you doing this it was oh that's interesting teach me you know I'm, I'm interested in that kind of stuff so always felt very supported in like the kind of the weirder things that I had to do. Yeah, I only support weird ideas and strange things. Nothing, anything normal, I don't support at all. <laughs> Which, if you're watching this on YouTube, because um, I'm p- posting the videos on YouTube, I just just look at my mom's background on her on her Zoom, and then you know when she says she's literally got like a planet behind her. Like that's my mother. <laughs> I laughed when she came on Zoom that that was what she chose. You've always been far out, mom. Yeah, definitely. Always. Um, okay, so I wanted to bring you on because you know you've you've helped be creative around like the elimination diet, and you came off of that elimination diet we did together, really mm-hmm. having to restrict a lot of foods, a lot more than I did. I was kind of dairy and everything else I was all right with, but you had to do a lot more, and you had to do it in a place where my house, where we have lots of different mm. likes dislikes personalities around Mm. food. I wouldn't say that my kids are the most laid back eaters. Like, you know, only Jeffrey, only Jeffrey. I I did was not blessed with the kids who were like, I'll eat anything. Like they'll eat anything I put in front of them, you know, and, or a husband (laughs) that'll do that. He's way better. But so I wanted you to share your, um, you know, your expertise. Like I do feel like you're an expert with this and you're like top tips to sort of how to navigate all that. Cause dinner's a lot. Dinner's hard for moms and families. It's like never ending and exhausting and you actually enjoy it, which mm-hmm. I think, well, I, but I do have the luxury now of not working. Mm-hmm. I did not enjoy it as much when I worked full time and then had to come home and put on a dinner. And I didn't do nearly as good a job nutritionally then as I am able to do now because I have the luxury of time. Um, But I have learned some tricks over the years to how to make it easier, how to be more careful about it, how to be prepared, et cetera. So Mm -hmm. I'm glad to share those things with your audience. Yay, good. All right, what's your first one? What's your first my, tip? Well, my first one I stole from your podcast last week, um, and that is do your homework. Mm. Be a detective. If you have to 
eliminate things from your diet, whether it's because of a food allergy, a food sensitivity, whether it's because you're a diabetic and have to cut back on sugar, whether it's because you have high blood pressure and have to cut back on salt, um, whether it's because you have high cholesterol and you need to work on that, uh, do your homework, find out what foods you shouldn't be eating, and then start looking for ways to substitute for those foods, particularly in the recipes that your family loves. For example, Jeffrey's favorite dinner is spaghetti and meatballs, <laughs> yeah. but I can't have gluten. Mm -hmm. So I have to either find meatballs that are gluten-free, which there are some that you can get in the frozen food section, but they're not always available. Or I have to home make meatballs ahead of time and have them ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I can't have the pasta unless it's gluten-free pasta. And no offense, but 90% of the gluten-free pasta I've tried is yucky. Right. I've only yeah. found one brand that I like. So instead of pasta, I either have spaghetti squash or zoodles. And I know, Cami, you join me often mm -hmm. with that. And my favorite is zoodles. And your sister's the one that taught me how to really make good zoodles. And well, wait, um, you have to tell people what zoodles are. Oh, you're speaking a different language. That's that's true. I am speaking Martian. OK, yeah. Um, <laughs> zoodles are spiralized zucchini. Um, and you do need this piece of equipment called a spiralizer, which is not that expensive. And it rotates the zucchini and makes these curly strings that come out that are that are made of the zucchini. Mm. And then you just fry it up. I fry it up in a little olive oil with um, um, salt, pepper and garlic powder. That's it. Fry it up enough to where the vegetable kind of wilts and it's a little bit soft and you're done. Doesn't take long. And the kids love to help with the spiralizing. So if you have little kids at home, when I was down at my other daughter's, she's got younger children and they would take turns whenever we were going to have zoodles for dinner. They would take turns because they like to turn the crank. And um, it's great fun for the kids. It's easy and it's fast and you can spiralize way ahead of time, you know, have it in the fridge and then just yank it out and cook it up real fast while your spaghetti noodles are boiling. Mm. And, it and they makes are it very good. I do agree. They're very, yeah, very and, good. And, and I so, don't think that gluten-free pasta, bleh, I don't like it. Very yeah, there's either. only one brand I like, and I only use it for our chicken noodle soup. So, mm, yeah. but uh, anyway, so, so that's the thing. So you have to be a detective. You have to do your homework. You have to find substitutes. Another example is the cream sauce that I use when I make chicken Alfredo, when I make chicken pot pies, when I make anything that needs a cream sauce, but I'm dairy free. Mm -hmm. So I cannot have the cheese. I cannot have the cream. I cannot have the milk. Um, I cannot use flour for thickening because I'm gluten free. So mm -hmm. I have to find an alternative for that. So I went online and Googled it. I mean, Google is the best thing ever invented. That's just all I want to say as far as look, cooking, making cooking easy. Yeah. And I tried a different 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 suggestions that different people had on their websites and finally found this um, cream sauce recipe that believe it or not uses cauliflower mm, yeah. and and it and even my granddaughter who hates cauliflower loves my chicken alfredo it's i so don't good. know if she knows there's it's made mostly of cauliflower but we she loves it. it but but uh that cream sauce is so versatile and so fast and easy i mean you just cook the cauliflower with some garlic and 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 the chicken broth and then you mush it in the blender and then you add enough either coconut milk or almond milk or whatever kind of milk you're using to make it the consistency you need for the particular recipe and you're good now you said that you googled so how many recipes did you try until you found until you found that one that like met your needs would you say probably you three or remember. probably three or four so that's another thing is sort of don't be afraid to try yeah you know yeah. you're not going to necessarily find what you want first go around and just be willing to sort of meh that wasn't what I and liked. don't settle for eh, it's okay find something that really really good or modify I do a lot of you know a la Cindy meals, as my family calls it. That's what we call it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Because um, I add extra spices or I add, I change the spices according to the things our family prefers versus what somebody else might prefer. Yeah. Because um, we're not a really spicy family. 
like well, as far as enjoying Dan, Dan is not spices. spicy. Dan yeah. is Dan Dan is so I have to tone things down a little bit for him. Um, but it's just it's important. And I also speaking of spices, make your own spice mix if you're gluten free or dairy free, because an awful lot of these buy your own spice mixes like Lipton's onion soup and mix and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Taco mix. A lot of them have gluten flour in them uh, or they have um, like milk solids in them or things like that. And there are recipes out the wazoo on Google for mm -hmm. making your own spice recipes. And so I make a lot of my own spice mixes. Just keep them in a baggie. I have a basket with a bunch of baggies. And when I need taco mix, I pull out the taco mix bag. And when I need the onion soup mix, I just pull out the onion soup mix bag. And it's cheaper, way cheaper and way healthier. Nice. It's a great tip, mom. I like that. Okay. okay. Um, another, another thing as far as doing your homework and being a detective is try different ways of cooking, like crock pot. If you're the kind of person that the night before you can cut everything up, throw it in the crock pot, put the crock pot in the fridge, and then before you go to work in the morning, take the crock pot out, put it on, set it for eight or 10 hours, how long it's going to be before you get home. And then bam, dinner's ready when you walk in the door and maybe you put some bread with it or a salad with it. But I mean, you know, that was a lifesaver when I was, when I worked. Okay. And lots, so here's a question. Yeah. When was the crock pot invented? Well, I don't know. My first one died and I think it was probably 20 or 25 years ago okay. that I got okay. it. So I would say back in the sixties or well, no, probably the seventies. Okay. Cause I, I was probably got it I mean, in I the seventies. old crock pot man that lasted forever it lasted forever i don't think the new ones last nearly as long unfortunately no, and that stuff like they used that to one just died a year or two ago so mm -hmm. um but so um, you were using that i don't i don't remember i mean you were using that when we were younger and you were i was time. i yeah. was it makes things so much either and and your grandmother altenberg used it too in fact i think she was using it before i got one really yeah yeah or okay. around the same time so mm -hmm. um because you know she worked yeah and so it made such a difference for her to be able to have spaghetti sauce ready when everybody came home or a pot roast ready when everybody came home so if you're if you've got the wherewithal or if you have somebody that can give you that for a gift use mm -hmm. it find out ways to use those kinds of time-saving appliances yeah. And that's so interesting. It just made me think like with, with Graham and your like grandma's generation and your generation, sort of the transition through like, you know, feminism and women's women's live and all that stuff. Like, and, and some of that around like how to make the house easier because a lot of women were going back to work where exactly in generations before that women didn't work, you stayed home and took care of the kids. So mealtime was like, you have time now. Mm -hmm. you know, in a right. different way than, you know, you had when, when we were younger, right? Yeah. Which well, just like know. roasting a chicken. That's one of my go-tos on a regular basis. And you can roast a chicken in the oven, but you have to be home for a few hours to do that. Or you can roast a chicken in the crock pot. If you're not going to be home all day, throw it in in the morning and it's done when you get home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I have that option and yeah. uh, it makes it so much easier to plan. Yeah. Yeah. Great tip. Mm -hmm. So that's my first tip. Okay. Okay. My second tip is plan, plan, plan. You are a master at this mother. <laughs> well, it's critical. And this is one of the things that at the beginning, researching, doing your homework, finding out, trying things and planning is going to take you more time than it will once you've been doing it for a while. Then it gets easier and easier. I mean, I'm to the point now where I have a list of meals that we like, main courses and salads and things like that. And I just sit down on Saturday and I say, what haven't we have lately that I'm in the mood for? I pick things off that list. She and also looks at the weather. So if it's going to be a cold day, she'll, you know, make kind of comfort food. If it's going to be a really hot day or a good day to grill outside you'll mm -hmm. choose it that way. Now, let me preface this by saying, and, and mom, you kind of talked about it a little bit. It takes longer in the beginning. Yes. You're like a well-oiled machine now mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with this. And you've also been doing this for decades. Like even before yes. we lived together, 
especially I think working full time, you would plan meals. You had to decide what to get at the grocery store. Like, oh, and I, I think- did it as a brand new bride in 1969. When your dad and I got married, I would go through magazines, look for recipes. I would plan. I would, you know, try all these new things. I mean, so you consider 1969 is how many years ago? 40, 50, 40. 60. No, not no, 50, 60, 50. 50, 50, 52 years. Yeah. You know, well, that I, and you also partly did that to save money too. Cause you just couldn't waste yeah. money at the grocery store. You had to be like, if I'm gonna, you know, you had to be mindful of your grocery budget. So it helps all of the things, but it is definitely a learned behavior. You know, it's, it's it, like a, it takes yeah, practice like skill, to come up with a way it works for you. Yeah. You know, Cammie, once I'm done planning the meals, I have a grocery list, a pre-made on the computer, printed out grocery list that I then go through the menus, look and see what I have, check out off what I don't have that I need for those meals. Then this is important if you have kids, especially, or a husband that finishes things and never tells you. (laughs) Um, None of us have had that problem, I'm sure. Um, I put that list out for everybody to look at a couple of days before I go grocery shopping. And the rule is, if you use something up, you better check it off on that list because I'm not psychic. And if you don't check it off on that list, I don't buy it. And you either go get it yourself or you do without. So yep. you, kind, you kind of have to train the family to participate yep. in this. You've trained us all. Yeah, I have. have. I have trained you all. And, 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 and Christian will say to me, oh, no, I forgot to put it on the list. And he'll text me while I'm grocery shopping. <laughs> Grammy, I forgot to put down this. You know, it's hysterical. And sometimes I'm in the store and I can go pick it up. And sometimes I'm already on my way home and it's too late. Yeah. yeah. So, but it is. So. I mean, it's a lot of it's a lot of pre-thought especially when you're dealing with a lot of people. I mean, there's six of us in the house while Meg's mm-hmm. off at school, but I mean, when she's, when she was home, there's six yeah, like of us. during the lot. pandemic. <laughs> exactly. There was a lot of us to sort of, you know, remember. And yeah, so my mom, so she puts out this list. We can see what the plan is for dinners on one side, like the weekly schedule. And then on the other side is is the grocery list with just like, you can make check boxes. And, and my mom is super organized. If you know me at all, I get some of this from her. Um, but she actually organizes it by like aisle in the store. And she does, you don't have to do all that. Like, this is not meant to be like, you have to do this to be successful, but you mom have figured out what works for us as a family, like what works for you as far as the one that's got to like plan and grocery shop. Mm -hmm. And then what works for us as people asking for what what we want, Mm -hmm. like you said, you're not a mind reader. So, but, and this has, this has morphed over time. Oh yeah. When the kids were little and wouldn't have done something like that, I counted on you to let me know when I needed to get something special for the kids. So you've got to make it work for you. And this is what works for me. I mean, Mm -hmm. I, we, at one point tried to do it online where I shared the list with everybody and they were going to make notes online, but they didn't do it. They needed the physical thing. I don't know that that was like as easy to use as we thought it was going to be. No, just like it, was, it wasn't. It was not yeah. user friendly. Mm-hmm. So, so we not didn't do that. Not as intuitive as we wanted it to be. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that. Mm-hmm. You know, We've but different bits and starts. That's right. But different people do it different ways. And, and you just, the main thing is you have to take the time and you have to be patient enough. Try different options until you find what suits you and your family the best. Mm -hmm. And the other thing you have to plan, remember I said plan, 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 there's Mm -hmm. meal planning, there's grocery planning, and then there's leftover planning. Okay, this is this is where you shine. Thank you. Like this is where you shine. And I, I wish I had more of your like skill around this. Well, if you just pay attention, by the time I die, you'll be able to figure (laughs) it out. (laughs) (laughs) all right so tell us tell us how you maximize your leftovers okay well first of all I do have a few people in this family who like to eat leftovers like me and Jeffrey and Cammie now 
nobody else likes to eat leftovers. Nope. So um, I was discovering when I first started cooking for everybody that there were certain things that we never had leftovers of. And there were certain things that we had leftovers and they ended up spoiling if I didn't go into Cammie's house and look in her fridge and, and, and grab them and eat them before they, you know, turn bad. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking about what can I do to fix that? And um, I would say I looked for tips online or in cookbooks or things like that. But I came up with some things that work really well for us. For example, um, uh, making sure that you, if I make something with rice, okay, not everybody loves rice in our family. They'll eat it, but they don't really love it. So we usually have extra rice left over because I use a rice cooker that there's only a, you can only go to a, you, the minimum you can make is a little more than what we need for one meal. So I started coming up with ways to use leftover rice. For example, um, leftover cooked rice, you can make um, Chinese um, fried rice with it. Mm -hmm. And you chop into it leftover vegetables, um, a little bit of onion. Um, you can throw in a can of something, leftover meat. If you have leftover chicken or leftover shrimp or leftover beef or pork, whatever. If you have just a tiny bit, you chop it in little pieces and you have it. And throw in a couple of scrambled eggs and you're good to go. And it's a really quick, fast, last minute, I don't have anything to cook tonight use the leftovers meal. Mm -hmm. So that's a one. And we like fried rice. Yeah, we like do even, like. If we don't like regular plain rice, like, yeah. you know, as a leftover, we like fried rice. Yeah. But that's not the only thing you can do with leftover rice. You can, mm -hmm. you, you can mix it with leftover chili or leftover taco meat and a little bit of tomato sauce and throw it in some peppers, halves of peppers put a little cheese on top, throw it in the oven, and you can make stuffed peppers, which are mm -hmm. fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, you can uh, think about chili. I don't know about the rest of you, but our family loves chili. So in the winter, we make a crock pot full. And I mean, a giant crock pot full. But mm -hmm. of course, we're not going to eat that all up in one meal. If you're on a budget, chili is great because you can a couple of days later you can use some of the leftover chili you can roll it up in tortillas and make enchiladas with it you can roll it up in a tortilla and make burritos with it you can make a taco with it you can make nachos with it you can make chili dogs with it mm -hmm. there's so many wonderful things that you can do with leftover chili um, you can even add extra beef broth and turn it into taco soup or chili soup mm -hmm. so for people that really have to watch their budget, chili is a great stretcher for your budget because you just make one pot of it and then you don't let people eat the leftovers. You save the leftovers. I'm lucky I have a separate kitchen. I grab the leftovers <laughs> I'm using. Step away. So I much. say nobody gets these leftovers but me. I have it in my kitchen because I know I'm going to be using it in three days to make something else. And that's what you do as well. You plan out your leftovers. So you know yeah. like this meal I'm going to have leftovers and so then I'm going to make X later on in the week. That's right. For yeah. example, roasted chicken. I was if just going to say the roast chicken is big. Yeah. I get three meals out of roasted chicken. We start with the roasted chicken. We have that one night with mashed potatoes and whatever veggie we want. And um, we eat the big parts, you know, the breasts, maybe the thighs or part of the thighs, or, you know, if you have people that like legs, you might, they might eat the legs, but the rest of the big chunks of meat that are left over that we didn't use I chop that up and I'll use that a few days later in a chicken pot pie or in a shepherd's pie or in a Chinese stir fry, maybe chicken and broccoli or something like that. I, I plan and I keep that. Now, sometimes I don't want to go that route or sometimes there's not enough chicken left over to do that. So then I might chop it up really little, mix it with some mayo and make uh, chicken salad roll ups or mm -hmm. chicken salad or stuffed chicken salad into a tomato, something mm -hmm. along those lines, um, or a chicken melt instead of a tuna melt. If yeah. you've never tried it, go for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third meal I get out of the, the um, roasted chicken is after I take the meat off the bones, I throw the bones back in the crock pot, fill it up with water, 
and a little bit of vinegar and cook it overnight that night in the crock pot. And it gives me chicken broth, which is my starter for having chicken soup. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not going to use it right away, I just throw it in a freezer baggie and freeze it. But then I have the chicken broth already saved up for the next time I do a, do a soup or some other recipe where I need chicken broth. So I get three meals out of a roasted chicken and that's three meals for six people. Yeah. I you know, know. so, yeah. and I, and that's not a huge ginormous chicken. That's just like a normal large roaster chicken. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. um, so, yeah. so there are lots of ways to plan and then your leftovers don't go to waste, which if you're on a budget and when I was a single mom, I was always on a budget. Mm -hmm. um, those kinds of things are really important to figure out. Yeah, I agree. You know, so again, plan, 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 plan mm -hmm. for your meals, plan for your shopping and plan for your leftovers. Yeah. Uh, and then my third tip is flexibility. <laughs> now, OK, mom. You're not the most flexible person in the world. I'm improving. <laughs> But I'm not talking about me being flexible. I'm oh. talking about the meals being flexible. Okay. Okay. And the number one thing that we do for um, flexibility is our make your own meals. One of the things that we love to do is have make your own salad in the summer. And this is kind of newish, right? Like when did we start doing Maybe this? two Couple years, years ago. Couple before years, right yeah. before the pandemic. Um but what, what I do is, because Friday is kind of a crazy day where somebody's going here and somebody's going there, and we don't always get to sit down together mm -hmm. um, on, on Friday. Sometimes we do. Sometimes three will sit down, and then three more will sit down at another time. But I make a whole bunch of lettuce and put it in a bowl. I cut up whatever vegetables we have on hand, tomatoes or cucumbers or celery, grated carrots, cut up an avocado. Um, I usually have several hard boiled eggs that I cut up, any leftover um, chicken in particular, but leftover meats that we might have, little bits and pieces left over from the week. Um, uh, cheeses, if you can, I can't have cheese, but I put cheese out for other people. Mm -hmm. um, because they can, if they want to sprinkle Parmesan cheese and make themselves maybe a chicken Caesar or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, bacon, I cook bacon and crumble it up so people can put bacon on the salad. And basically everybody goes through and makes it their own way. Mm -hmm. And that works out really good. But you don't have to do that just with salads. You could do that with like a noodle noodles and do it like a Buddha bowl. And if you do something like a Buddha bowl, you want to have like a hot broth or leftover hot soup that you can put in with it. Um, chicken broth is really great for that. So you have the noodles that are already cooked. You heat up your chicken broth. You throw in the bits and pieces that you want, the leftover vegetables. I think roasted vegetables would be really good in there. Mm -hmm. um, and then you pour some chicken broth over it to kind of heat everything up. And there you have a make your own and people can pick and choose what they want. Mm -hmm. And that's what yeah. you do with like the three leftover shrimps from Tuesday night, you know, right. That are just like uh, by themselves. Yeah. Or yeah. And, like the and the one left over the one leftover pork chop, you know, or the one leftover chicken breast, you know, there's not enough for everybody, but by cutting it up and having it available, people can pick and choose and make their own thing. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's a, a really, a really, really good option. But you and can, it is you, nice because then you can just put it out and yeah. then everybody can grab and just eat when they, when they want to shifts or somebody's mm -hmm. dropping somebody off. And, you know, it's not like you've got to keep anything hot. That's right. You know, and if we do soup, if we do soup and salad, the soup can sit on the stove and, mm -hmm. you know, be warm. Like it's not like a, you know, because that's it, the thing. I'm, you don't want the food to be cold or no. not. And the thing that's great about having soup and salad or soup and sandwiches is that you could have made the soup a couple of days ahead of time mm -hmm. the night before and then just heat it up. And it's especially good for a day that's crazy when you're doing so much, you're going to be lucky to get home five minutes before it's time for dinner. 
So you can have all of that stuff prepared the night before and just Mm -hmm. lay it out and people help themselves. You can also do make your own tacos and some people can make nachos and some people can make taco salad and some people can make corn tacos and some people can make flour tacos. You know, you can make it very flexible. You can make, make your own baked potatoes with all the different toppings, including cheeses and, and, and um, bacon and, and sour cream and chives and, you know, whatever chili leftover chili, by the way, and leftover sloppy joes are great on baked potatoes. So if you have Mm. make your own baked potato, that's good to have if you have leftover chili or leftover the meat from a sloppy Joe's. Yeah. Um, You can do leftover sandwiches, you know, where if you got a few hard boiled eggs, you make a little egg salad, you got a little bit of chicken breast, you make a little bit of chicken salad. Mm -hmm. Um, You make a little tuna salad because most people keep tuna in their in their pantry. And then people can come and choose, Okay, do I want an egg salad sandwich, a tuna salad sandwich or a chicken salad sandwich tonight? Mm -hmm. So that's another good one to do. Um, And even think of breakfast on Saturday or Sunday, make your own waffles. You know, you get out, get out the waffles. Maybe you've made them ahead of time and you've frozen them, or maybe you're using regular frozen waffles from the grocery store, but you get out things like different kinds of fruit. This is great in the summer, different kinds of fruit and you slice it up and you have um, different kinds of, you have maple syrup and maybe you have powdered sugar and uh, maybe you have different kinds of jellies or peanut butter. Mm-hmm. You know, peanut butter yeah. and chocolate chips on a waffle. I mean, it's yeah. protein. Yeah, it's a little sugary, but it's protein and it's, you know, something different. And especially if you have young kids, something different is really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so make your own is a really good one for flexibility and for fast. Mm-hmm. And for using up stuff that you have in your fridge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Another thing for flexibility is always have a backup plan, a plan B. Mm. Like I remember a couple of weeks ago, you guys may be aware, but Jeffrey was really sick and he was in the hospital for two weeks. Yeah. And I either had Cami at home or Dan at home or maybe neither of them at home. So I sometimes I was only cooking for two people and sometimes I was cooking for three or four people. But normally I cook for five or six people. So instead of making what I originally had on the menu, I would step back and say, okay, I only need enough for two people. What do these people like? What can I do with some of those ingredients that's different, but something that that person likes and I can do, you know, quickly for everybody. And so once you get enough meals under your belt, you know what's quick and what's easy um, and things that are kind of go-to's. Yeah. And that's and that's part of my um, flexibility thing is have a fast go to list, especially if you're a working mom and you really say, Cindy, I do not have the time to prepare a big meal like this, a, a different meal like this. This is too much prep. So have 10 meals in your repertoire that are 30 minute, 45 minute meals that you can throw together that don't take a lot of uh planning or if they do everything can be done the night before and you take 30 minutes to throw it together Mm -hmm. have that list and just keep repeating that list if it's delicious if it's things your family likes they're not going to care and if you want to do some fancy do it on saturday or sunday you know when you're not working i mean and and i think that's something that you eventually will have that after you work at this for a while um And another thing to keep in mind with flexibility is shortages and seasonal things. Sometimes you're really in the move for strawberries, but there aren't any strawberries in the store. Or you wanted asparagus as your vegetable and they don't have any asparagus. Um, So you have to have a backup plan. You have to have, keep in mind that I know with vegetables, unless I've got something really in mind, I, I do the let's go see what they have at the grocery store. And yeah. when I shop, if I know I'm going to make roasted vegetables on one of the days of the week, I'll pick up squash if they've got it. I'll pick up, uh, you know, cauliflower or I'll pick up peppers or I'll make sure I always put usually always put onions and peppers in my in my mm-hmm. roasted vegetables. Brussels sprouts. Uh, we love Brussels sprouts, mm-hmm. but you can do beets if you love beets. Dan doesn't like beets. So if I do beets, I have to do them separate, Um, you know, but, you know, if you're flexible, a lot of things can go into that. Um, And you can even and you can also see what's on sale. 
because if it's in season, it'll be cheaper. So paying attention to sort of like, oh, you know, that's, there's asparagus, but it's out of season. And so it's really expensive. Yeah. You know, um, let me go ahead and choose something that's in season, you know, Uh um, that's less expensive. That's going to help you too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and sometimes you can't do fresh. They just don't have it. And so you have backup stuff in your freezer. Mm -hmm. You have a bag of green beans because you can't find fresh green beans. You have a bag Mm -hmm. of carrots because you can't find fresh carrots, whatever. Frozen broccoli, whatever. The stuff that you know your family will eat. We're big broccoli eaters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, and then you drag that out instead. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I think, yes, it comes with experience, but it also comes with planning and it comes with knowing what's available and what you can afford. And I will say too, because this is what I tell my coaching clients when we're talking about nutrition, it can feel very overwhelming Mm -hmm. when you're changing your diet, when you're trying to, you know, make dinner every single night, you know, for your family and whatever. It's just just a lot. It feels, it's a lot of responsibility and it can feel very overwhelming. But once you, and I want, I wonder if you agree with me, I feel like in my own journey, my own health journey and with my family that once I, once I figured it out, once I like did the detective work, did some planning, it really became effortless. Do you feel that way about meal planning now and sort of cooking? I mean, it's not always, you've got a lot of personalities to deal with, but you know, 90% of the time. Yeah. yeah. 90% of the time it's sit down on Saturday, spend 15 or 20 minutes and I'm ready to go. Right. And then Um, it's just the grocery shopping Monday and then the nightly cooking, but you really enjoy the cooking part. Yeah. I, as as long as I have time, Mm -hmm. you know, and nobody's throwing me a curveball. Yeah. Because I personally am not flexible when I get thrown a curveball. No. So I struggle with that. But fortunately, I I have a son in law (laughs) who says to me, Mom, it's no big deal. Nobody's mad. (laughs) Nobody's mad. If it's not going to be ready on time, I'll eat it later. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm one. I like to know what time we're going to eat because I plan everything because I, I like the food to be served hot and ready. Well, and you to like go. the presentation of it too. I yeah. think there's a part you're like that's your act of service. You're like, yeah. look at what's in her. You know, look at what I made. You kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I want everybody to salivate while they're helping themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you've tried a new recipe or you're super excited about like an adjustment that you must Cindy adjustment that you made for a meal Mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, it's, I I think as with everything else, like effort does pay off, especially in Mm -hmm. this, you know, the effort to sort of figure it out, like it pays off. It's sort of it can feel laborious, but it really does pay off and sort of become this, you know, more or less well-oiled machine. And just like right. you were able to do, you know, because you'd, you'd figured so much out over all these years that when Jeffrey was in the hospital and we didn't, we didn't know, like, we didn't no. even know, would we be home? Would we not be? Who's coming in? Is he coming home? Is he staying? I mean, it was so sort of a day-to-day thing, but you already have amassed that like mental list of, go-to meals. So you were able to pivot a lot easier because you, you've been, you already had that information. You already did that, you know, detective work. Right. And I think that's the thing that you have to do. You have to be kind to yourself. You have to give yourself permission to fail. You have to keep that taco kit up in the cabinet. And on the night when, when, when dinner is a disaster, you have to be able to go, we got tacos, grab the taco kit, Heat it. Call it a day. Call it a day. I mean, it's or really if you planned on having a, a big meal, a new recipe, and then your day got away from you. And, you know, Johnny got sick and threw up at school and you don't have the two hours you needed to cook the thing you wanted to try. Like, just move it. Like, yeah. Do the tacos. Order yeah. out. I mean, whatever. Like, yeah. order pizza. Like, it's it's okay to this is a process. It's not like you're not getting to a destination. It's not like right. you're, you know, it, this is a process and, and it can be fun. I mean, I know I'm so grateful. One of the things I didn't anticipate by you living with us and, 
um, and sort of shouldering this cooking dinner thing is that, you know, Jeffrey's so involved Mm -hmm. with making dinner with you Yes, and full transparency. I don't have the patience. (laughs) <laughs> to do that with him. I don't. And, and guess what, mom, I don't think at my age, you would have had the patience to do it with me either. No, you you're have absolutely with him right. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's beautiful that you are now old enough. <laughs> you have <Yay>! the patience, <laughs> right? You're old enough that you've got the patience and you also really enjoy cooking. And then Jeffrey is old enough and really needs some of these skills that it's almost like a cooking life skills day-to-day thing where I, if it was on me to sort of like, oh, Jeffrey needs to learn these things and I have to teach him, it would feel like a lot of pressure for you guys. It's sort of like fun, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, he's, he's my like, sous chef. Yeah. He's your sous chef where I would feel like I got to teach him this. I got to make sure he has these skills, you know, like as his mm-hmm. mom, I have right. Where it's just like, Jeffrey and Grammy time and, you know, and he's learning and doing stuff that I, I know I would just be like, Oh, just give me that. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And he always tells me when it's something he feels uncomfortable doing, you know, I don't want to do that. He's way more capable. He's way more capable though, capable with lots of things than maybe I know, you know, so it's, it's great for other people to get involved, you know, to sort of, cause then I'll look and be like, Oh, we can do that. Like, that's great. I don't know that I would have pushed him as hard in that realm, you know, in that area. Well, and I think it's really good for kids, any kids. Um, cause I know with Reese's kids, I have them help me when I was down there. Mm-hmm. Um, and even if it's just, decorating the salad you know I cut up all the ingredients and throw the lettuce in the bowl but they put the peppers on and they put the tomatoes on and they put the cucumbers on and they make it pretty they've made salad yeah and they're excited and they'll eat it because they made it and I think getting kids involved in an appropriate way when you have the time and the patience to do it is really really a good thing Um, because then they'll grow up being willing to well, I did good with Grammy and made salad. Maybe I can make something else. Maybe I can try something else. And they'll be more independent. When they go to college, they won't have to depend on dorm food. Yeah. Gross. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, well, thank you, mom. I appreciate your time. I hope you guys enjoyed um, listening to our conversation with my mom. I don't even know that I told them your name. My mom's name is Cindy. I called her mom the whole time, but she does have a name. Her name is Cindy. <laughs> and, and if any and if any of you want one of my recipes, we can put it on the show notes. So just let me know if there's something in particular that I mentioned that you're interested in knowing more details about either how to do it or what goes into doing it. And I'll be yeah, glad to or put even, them in. Or even um, a copy of your grocery list or a copy of your, mm-hmm. your dinner plan, like the document that we use. It's, you know, it's not crazy complicated, but my mom went to the effort to, um, create it. So happy to share that with you guys too. Um, always in the show notes is a way for you to message me. So you can go ahead and message me and say like, I need, I need Cindy's help. I mean, honestly, mom, I think, you know, I think you could, um, you could like create your own course or like, you know, program teaching people how to do this. Just FYI. I know you don't want like a job and you'll, you'll still have to cook for my family. So it could never interfere with that. Yeah, it couldn't, it couldn't, even (gasps) though most of your friends have tried to bribe me to move in with them. They all have, they're like, (laughs) what? She cooks me, she does grocery shopping and and you do the grocery shopping because of my back, my back injury. I couldn't. Well, yes, but I also do the grocery shopping so that I make sure that what I want is what I get. Yeah, because I can't trust any of you. She, oh, there were things when I used to grocery shop. There would be there would be words. There's, <laughs> it's not all sunshine and rainbows over here having a personal chef. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for listening, and Mom, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your wisdom as always, even if I don't always act like I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you're welcome, honey. All right. Love you, Mom. Love you too. Bye. Bye.